So last year, I made a video talking about how I was buying the 3DS in 2021. The 3DS has done nothing but climb in value over the last like year or so. It's pretty expensive actually to get a 3DS now. It's also getting more and more expensive to get something like a Game Boy Advance, AGS 101, the Game Boy Advance SP that has the backlit screen. But it's actually still relatively cheap to get a DS Lite. And really based on the library of games you have access to with the DS Lite, I think it's still a handheld worth buying now in 2022. I picked one up off of eBay for pretty cheap and I thought we'd go through it. I talked a bit about it and actually try to fix it. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. First thing, this is a red DS Lite. And the nice thing about this is while I did buy one on purpose that's broken just to do in this video and try to fix it and really save one from the scrap heap, uh, these are not very expensive to buy. I seem to be finding these very, very regularly on eBay for 40, 50, 60 dollars in working condition. This one in particular, they said does not turn on. And when I plug it in, you can see we got the charging light that blinks for maybe a second or two and then shuts off. This was a pretty common issue and that's basically saying that there is an issue inside that is keeping it from charging completely and of course means it will not post or turn on or do anything. So first thing we'll do is open it up and take a look inside. We can quickly see if there's any water damage in a DS Lite by just kind of opening this up and then taking the battery out. There is one of those water indicator stickers here. This one has not been hit with any kind of liquid, which is a good first step. I am missing a couple of screws here. Looks like there was supposed to be a Phillips head here and a Phillips head screw here. The tri-wing screws are all in place and it also looks like they didn't take these pads off, which tells me they probably saw these two screws here, had a Phillips head they could take them out with and then realized, oh, I don't have any of these tri-wing drivers to remove these. At least that's what I'm hoping anyway, since tri-wing drivers aren't very common necessarily for uh, most people to just have in their toolbox. And I don't know if I would suggest buying a DS Lite in hopes of fixing it, considering the DS Lite in general for the top screen is a pain to work on. The bottom screen's not bad, but then also the board itself can have some pretty serious issues like the card slot on the back. If that gets mangled, it is a real pain to work on, especially with basic soldering tools. But overall things like power, like I'm seeing here, can be easy to fix if it's a certain thing. All right, it looks good. Usually you can see all kinds of corrosion and craziness going on here if they spilled something into it. It tends to kind of seep in through the battery compartment. That's why they have a water indicator sticker right here. But it can also get in through the card slot, obviously, or the shoulder buttons. However, this looks pretty clean inside. So we'll take off our little spring mounted shoulder buttons here. We also have our Wi-Fi card right there that needs to come up, a screw here, and I should be able to lift this whole thing out. I remember always being so annoyed by this antenna cable here because it has to go underneath of the card slot, which means you kind of have to hold it up and look just underneath of there to, to get it through this one small narrow pathway for it. And at times it would be the most frustrating thing to deal with. Anyway, with all of that done, we have to flip this up. Looks like I did have some buttons come, come away with it. And we have our ribbon cable here from the top screen to unhook. And then the board should come free. I do have to remove this bottom screen very quickly to see if there's any water damage underneath. There is none. This board itself is dry, which is great since whenever I'd work on DS lights, I, I really, it must've been a 50-50 shot if the thing was water damage or not back then. Anyway, we have our board here and a lot of times you'll have that flashing light. Basically, if the, power, if the power circuit can't complete and a lot of times there's a fuse here or there's another one, I think, on the other side. Basically, there's a couple fuses that can act up and break that connection. So a lot of times what you can do is either replace it or just bridge it. And we can check the little fuse here to start with, which is right next to the power plug. Okay, so we have our multimeter here. Touch them together, it makes that beep. That tells us there's continuity. We're gonna check the fuse here to start, F1. That's usually where I'll, I'll at least check first, just to see if we have, we do. The other fuse is down here, F2. It's actually right near the battery plug. It's really small, so it's kind of hard to get to. Let me see if I can 
down here. There we go. And I'm actually not getting anything through it. Plug this guy in here so power is getting to it. There we go. Oh, it's getting away from me. Now I just want to see if the power is getting stuck there and that'll basically confirm that there's an issue with F2. So let's double check F1. There we go. So F1 on the other side looks all right. Let's see F2, the far side. All right, and then on the opposite side is nothing. So it appears that F2 will be, well, we'll take a shot at jumping essentially to test it. To try this out, I'm just gonna bridge the fuse. I can replace it, but just to see if that fixes the issue we're running into. Fuse is removed, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bridge the spot for now with just a piece of metal from a header. So there we go, nothing fancy, just a way to see if that's what was holding up power for this system. So let's go ahead and test it to see if we're getting power to the battery prongs now, which I mean, we should be if that was the problem since, well, now we're just connecting it with a piece of metal. Let's bring that over here. So battery prong, we are getting power now, which is good. Whereas before it was just zero. And it does appear that that F2 fuse was blown. I, from what I remember, that will actually get blown from the back screen. Like that can actually cause uh, an issue and it will blow that fuse if it's not insulated properly. But let's just kind of hold the battery in there, plug this in. And look at that, we got the light not turning off. Seems to be charging the battery fine. So we'll drop the board back in and find out if the DS light even works in the first place, which can of course be a whole other issue on its own. You can fix the DS light so it turns on, charges the battery fine, but one of the screens could be broken or messed up or something. And then you gotta go through that. It's, it's kind of a roll of the dice, especially on one that doesn't turn on, uh, considering how much abuse these DS lights probably went through in their lifetime. All right, it's all back together here for the most part, as far as I really need it, so I can try to turn it on here. And it looks like the battery's dead. So I'm gonna have to leave it plugged in for a little bit and then I'll come back and try it out. Okay, so the battery was just completely dead. So I decided to just leave it plugged in overnight last night. And I figured now we, we can check it out after bridging the fuse. Let's see if we have power in this now. And we do. Both screens appear to work right now. That's right, I have to go through the initial setup because the battery was out. But it looks like both screens work. We just heard the speakers and everything. Let me go through this and we'll try out a game. Touch screen is good. There's no stylus, so that, that was always a thing though. I, every time these would get traded in or or anything like that, it'd be missing a stylus. It was very common. We just have a drawer full of them at, at the different stores just to drop in there. I have Star Wars Battlefront. I don't think I've ever played this on the DS before, but we'll see if this reads a game correctly. And there it is. So we have Star Wars Battlefront here jump into that. That was always the fun thing about the DS back in the day is you would have games that you, would, you wouldn't expect at all to be on the system from like major uh, game franchises like Call of Duty. Like it was, there were some odd ones on the DS is what I'll say. A lot of sacrifices had to be made to get those running on this system. But like Star Wars Battlefront, again, something I've never played before. I wonder, I wonder what it looks like. So I just did instant action. You can host or join a game. I guess that means you can, that's kind of cool. So I, I guess if you have DS lights all around you in, in the room, you guys can kind of just jump in together and and play a match. That's again, interesting. I, I have not played this before. You'll have to let me know down below in the comments if you played Battlefront on the DS light. Ooh, okay, so this is like, might be kind of hard to see. It's like top down almost, like, a, like isometric kind of. Oh, 
Bot 2 defeated me. Let me go to, let me be heavy real quick. I have no idea what the controls are. So you kind of move around with the D-pad here, right? It's sort of like tank controls almost. And it's kind of hard to see. And I'm trying to figure out how you actually fire. That's the camera. Well, I got bot three, but certainly not the most intuitive when it, when it comes to the control scheme, but that's what you got back then. Because the DS Lite was so popular, you had so many different publishers and developers doing whatever they could to get their game on this system. That includes taking Battlefront, which is, you know, that's supposed to be this massive scale battle going on and shrinking it down onto this system and even going to like this isometric view to make it work. Now, as I said, one of the biggest reasons to buy a DS Lite is the game library obviously is massive. And again, there are some strange games to try out on the DS, but also the pricing when compared to things like a Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101. That being one of the Game Boy Advance SPs that has the backlog screen, much nicer looking than the frontlet screen in the original. The only problem is they are very expensive. I mean, you're looking at easily 120, upwards $150 for one that's in good condition right now on eBay. But the DS Lite will at least play Game Boy Advance games. It won't play older Game Boy games, so unfortunately you do lose that functionality. But the Game Boy Advance, once again, has a massive library and you just kind of drop it in here turn it on and you can choose either the top screen or the bottom screen uh, for displaying the Game Boy Advance. It'll come it'll come up here, you see start GBA game right there. We'll hit that. And it looks like they had it playing on the top screen there, but it is a very good experience for the Game Boy Advance on the DS Lite. I even think the controls themselves are spread out a bit better compared to the SP where it might be a lot closer together with your hands. This certainly accommodates uh, larger hands a bit better. The only thing that's really funny about this is the game cartridge sticks out at the bottom here and you do kind of feel it if you're sort of playing it, you might actually hit it a few times. It's really in there though. So you're not gonna hit it and like mess up the game or anything like that. Like it's not gonna freeze on you, um, but it's very noticeable. However, you can see the screen itself. Of course, the DS Lite screen is already really good in terms of the colors and, and, the, and, the, and the screen quality, but then you pair that with the Game Boy Advance library and, and it's really good. And the fact that you can get this for like 50, 60 bucks with a charger and all of that makes it significantly cheaper than what you'd be paying for a 3DS right now without the Game Boy Advance functionality. You also have the battery life, which is very, very good on the DS Lite. I know people talk about getting like 20 hours or something. Typically you'll get like 12 to 14 hours of regular usage with, with a decent brightness. I feel like getting like 20 hours, you have the brightness all the way down and it's kind of hard to see. Usually people keep it at like at least mid-level brightness, but there are a lot of people who will have this in a drawer for like a year or two, go back, turn it on, and it still has full battery. Probably the game I played the most on the DS Lite outside of like the typical Pokemon games was I think Mario Kart. The cool thing about that was it really took advantage of the DS Lite's Wi-Fi capabilities, which was new at the time for Nintendo, but you only needed one cartridge, then other DS Lights could connect to you and play without their own game. And it was really cool when you would set up at a friend's house or something with it. They didn't have the game, but if they had a DS, they could jump in. You know, I've been thinking about it more and more recently. I kind of missed the clamshell design from Nintendo. I just I think it worked a lot better as a system that was more portable or travel friendly compared to the Switch now where you'll need like an entire case and all this stuff to help protect the screen. Whereas it was a great design when it came down to protecting two screens and becoming more pocket sized. Who knows, maybe sometime in the future Nintendo will play around with another clamshell design. You never know, Nintendo is, well, they're Nintendo. Now, I don't know if I'd recommend buying a DS Lite in hopes of fixing one because the top screen is a whole thing, the bottom screen. And while I got kind of lucky here with it just being one of the fuses, it could be a whole host of problems, which does include water damage because these were beaten up pretty well in their lifetime from what I've seen with the hundreds that I've worked on at the different repair stores. But still, the DS Lite, I think, holds up great even now in 2022. Certainly worth picking up with the library from the DS and the Game Boy Advance. But let me know what you guys think about the DS Lite down below, especially if you were around when it was first coming out or if you're someone who's gone back to it recently. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.